Hello, thanks for coming along with me on this little outing to Istanbul. Getting around the city by car can be a real pain with lots of traffic and it's always hard to find parking spots. Usually you waste so much time getting around in the car that there's not enough time left to explore. Instead, we headed to the neighborhood of Uskudar, which lies along the Bosphorus Strait on the Anatolian side of the city, and we found a parking garage to leave the car in for the day and just use public transportation to get around. First, we walked around Uskadar a bit and checked out a few alleys that were bustling with people. There were many places selling their goods, from Turkish candies like lokum to Ramazan pide, which is a special bread served during the month of Ramazan. And there were plenty of shops filled to the brim with spices and a variety of teas. After seeing all of these goodies, we were getting a little hungry and searched for a spot to grab some lunch. We tried out this fish restaurant selling balik ekmek, which literally means fish bread. It's a popular food here in Turkey, and closer to the Golden Horn especially, you'll see boats tied up along the shore selling these sandwiches straight from their boat. Balik ekmek is usually served simply with some lettuce, onion, maybe carrots and cabbage, and then of course you're given lemon to squeeze on top. And nothing complements the sandwich better than a nice soda. But don't always expect your soda to come to you ice cold in Turkey. I'm still trying to get used to that. After finishing our sandwiches, we walked over to the Uskadar metro station to take the metro over to the historic peninsula. Normally crossing one of the bridges on the Bosphorus by car is really time consuming, but this metro line is really convenient. It takes you from the Asian side under the sea, and when you exit, you're suddenly in Europe. The historic peninsula of Istanbul is where you'll find many of the most iconic tourist attractions, such as the Blue Mosque, Hagia Sophia, and Topkapı Palace. And because of this, it's usually quite busy, especially on the weekends. While walking around the busy streets, we noticed some signage for the Ish Bank Museum, so we decided to check it out. Ish Bank is a well-known bank here in Turkey, and it was founded by Atatürk back in the early 1900s. And as I've mentioned in my previous videos, Atatürk was the founder of the Turkish Republic, and there's a great respect for him even to this day, so naturally there was a museum to preserve its history. The building is from the late 1800s and used to serve as a post office until it was converted into a bank after the turn of the century. It operated as a functioning bank up until 2004 and eventually was turned into this museum. there were all sorts of artifacts from the bank's past, like their old typewriters and phones, along with some advertisements, and even a really colorful collection of little piggy banks. I enjoyed the set of the old office as well, with the detailed woodwork. Of course, there were also many references back to Ataturk. Even if you know nothing about Turkish banking like me, it was still a great little museum and gave you a glimpse of life in Turkey in the earlier half of the 20th century. The museum was free to enter and offered audio guides in English as well. After 
After taking some time at the museum, I noticed we were too close to my favorite Turkish delight shop to not go and check it out. Ali Muhaddin Hajibekir makes my absolute favorite Turkish delights, or lokum as they're called in Turkish. I've mentioned them in my video from Istanbul about a year ago, which I'll leave in a link for you to check out. They have a few different shops in Istanbul, but the shop on the historic peninsula is the oldest. This candy shop dates back to 1777, so they've had a lot of time to perfect their candy. And for me, a good Turkish delight comes down to having the right texture, and they've really mastered the perfect chewy, but not too hard, not too soft lokum. We selected a variety of Turkish delights like walnut, pistachio and pomegranate, and rose, and I also tried out their dark chocolate covered marzipan and thoroughly enjoyed it. After snacking on some lokum and chocolata, we continued our walk around the historic peninsula and checked out some of the streets behind the Blue Mosque. There was a tiny art studio selling some floral prints using a traditionally Turkish technique called abru, or marbling. I especially liked the daisy, as it reminded me of my grandma. But unfortunately the shop was closed, so I couldn't inquire about the price, but hopefully we'll return here another day when it's open. Sultan Ahmed Square sits alongside the famous Blue Mosque and was the location of the Hippodrome of Constantinople. Here is where chariot races took place in ancient times. Today, it's an active area filled with tourists walking to and from some of the most well-known attractions in Istanbul, but the square still houses a few monuments showing just how far back the history of the city goes. The obelisk of Theodosius, for example, came from Egypt to Constantinople back in the 4th century AD. Each of the monuments here also has a little information plaque near it to give you a bit of its history. A short walk from Sultan Ahmet Square is Hagia Sophia, which is arguably the most iconic place to visit in Istanbul. I've been inside a few years ago and was so impressed by its immense history. It was originally constructed as a church in the year 360 and later became a mosque in 1453 during the Ottoman Empire until it was preserved as a museum in 1935. Unfortunately, it was turned back into a functioning mosque back in 2020, so things inside may have changed a bit since I last saw it. Dinner time was getting near and we were getting hungry. We visited this area during the month of Ramadan and didn't take into consideration how busy the restaurants would be. Most of the restaurants in this tourist area were selling special price to-go options. Since many of the people were fasting for the day, they generally all eat at the same time after sunset, so this meant that lines were long. We decided to grab just some quick sandwiches with kufta, which are basically like little hamburgers and a large piece of bread. And then the to-go pack also came with either water or a yogurt drink called Iran, and we got some soda. In addition, they packed two dates, which is a traditional way of breaking fast. We took our food back to Sultan Ahmet Square, since there was plenty of seating, and the stray cats nearby waited around in case we had leftovers for them. After some people watching and enjoying the sunset, we grabbed some corn cobs on the way out as a snack, but to be honest, it wasn't that great. Oh well, at least I had my Turkish delights as backup. Thank 
you so much for taking the time to watch along on the stay in Istanbul. I'll be bringing more videos to you from Turkey in the future, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay informed. Thanks!